Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and I am very late on Vlogmas. <laughs> So my last update, I believe, was the 11th, possibly, maybe. As you would have watched in my Vlogmas videos, uh, two of my best friends came up to my new home with my family to spend the weekend with me and have some fun, some girl time that we haven't had in over a year because of quarantine. <laughs> I haven't seen them in so long and I gave them Christmas presents and we hung out, we played guard card games, we went on walks, we went shopping. It was, it was amazing, you guys. So I had so much fun with them and I haven't had that much fun in literally so long. It was like having a sleepover, like in high school or middle school all over again and it was so much fun and I just wanted to revel in it, you know? I wanted to spend some time with my friends and not have a camera or my phone filming us the whole time. I just wanted to enjoy what was going on and we just had so much fun. And so that's why I have not posted for the past couple of days. I've been with them, hanging out with them, and I also just didn't wanna stay up until 2 a.m. because that's when my video would be done exporting and uploading for the next day, my vlogs. And I didn't wanna stay up till 2 a.m. editing on my computer when I could be hanging out with them, you know? Also a fun thing that happened while they came, like the first day they came over was the day that Taylor Swift released Evermore and holy crap, Evermore. Okay, so I absolutely adore Evermore. It is gorgeous, beautiful. I don't necessarily think that it is better than Folklore. I love Evermore every single time I listen to it. I love it even more. I think I've talked about this before, I don't know, but I have like a method to listening to Taylor's new music and it always releases either, I think like 11 o'clock night my time instead of midnight, it's an hour before because time difference. And so what I do is whenever the album releases, I sit in the dark on my phone and just listen to the album in the dark all the way through. And without a doubt, no matter what, there is always one song that I connect to immensely and that makes me sob like a freaking baby. I also really like the songs that nobody else <laughs> likes. Like my favorite songs are some people's least favorite, most people's least favorite. So um, like Reputation, my favorite song is New Year's Day, without a doubt, one of my favorite songs of all time because it connects to me so much. For Lover, it was It's Nice to Have a Friend. That one hit me to my core, sobbed like a little baby. For Folklore, I honestly think the whole album made me sob like a baby. The whole entire album made me sob. I really loved specifically um, Seven, August, and specifically August. August is my favorite on the album, and then Hoax. Those three are like everything to me. And Evermore, I love Evermore. I love listening to it. I think I love it even more every single time I listen to it. The first time I listened to it though, I thought something was wrong with me because I did not cry once. There was one song that got me teary-eyed and that is my favorite in the album, but maybe it's just on the time that I, I listened to it and just this time period just freaking sucks with everything going on in the world. So I love this album, but I don't necessarily think that it's my favorite from her, which has been not the pattern that I see for Taylor. Usually every album she releases is my new favorite one. So far, Folklore still takes the cake for me. I know that some people aren't Taylor Swift fans, so I'm just gonna quickly state some ones that I absolutely adore on this album, um, that I really like, and then we can get on to other updates. I love and adore Willow. Willow is amazing. Dorothea, amazing. Coney Island was the one that made me teary-eyed. That is my favorite on the album. Coney Island is absolutely perfection to me. Ivy is another favorite of mine. Closure. Closure is fantastic and of course Evermore is absolutely amazing. All of these are awesome songs and beautiful songs and I just need to listen to it over and over and over again, which is what we've been doing literally all weekend my friends have been here. We've been had that album on nonstop. So we love Taylor Swift. We even listen we even watched the documentary of folklore on um Disney Plus. Like we held off on watching that so all three of us could watch together in this weekend and it was amazing. We want to, them to release one for Evermore. I love to watch a documentary like Folklore, the Folklore documentary about this one. First things first, reading update. I honestly don't know where I left off with reading. Um, I think I was currently reading Fire in His Veins by Ruby Dixon. I finished that, gave that four stars, really liked it. I also read and finished Fire in Her Eyes by Ruby Dixon. That is my favorite in the series. I knew it was going to be five freaking stars. I loved this one. I'm not giving summaries on these really. They're just dragon shifter alien romances in a post-apocalyptic earth. Dragons mate with um, humans and it is amazing. I read those two books um, 
I didn't really get a lot of reading in because I was with my friends. I read a few historical romances though. Um, so I am this far the way through, again, The Magic by Lisa Kleypas. I am doing this for a dedicated different secret TBR video. So I cannot update you, but just so you know, I have a lot of tabbies. I almost sobbed reading the last chapter I just read. So um, I've been talking to my friend about this book and I really enjoy it, really like it, and I really wanna read more of it today. Then yesterday I was working on cards, sitting out on my friends. I got five cards done yesterday and that's the most I've ever done in a day. And while I was doing cards, I started and finished Never Seduce a Scott by Maya Banks. This one is getting five stars from me. I loved this historical, holy crap. <laughs> holy crap, this book is stinking amazing. So this book is about Eveline. She was thrown off of her horse three years ago trying to um, run away because family wanted her to marry an abusive man. And her family loves her very much, but they didn't really believe her when she said that she was scared to marry this man. And so on her way to running away, she falls off of her horse and basically is in a coma for a while and wakes up and cannot hear anymore. She is deaf now. She can't hear anymore. She doesn't know what's wrong with her, but she has learned to read people's lips to be able to communicate. Her family has no idea that she's deaf. She just, they just think that since she hit her head, um, falling off of a horse that she has brain damage and she's not herself anymore and she has not spoken in three years either. But everyone around her, including her family and clan, thinks that she's touched. And so then her fiance hears about this and calls off the engagement. And so Evelyn realizes if she just doesn't speak anymore and her family thinks that something's wrong with her, then she does not have to marry this horrible man. And so she's kept up with this um, ruse her whole life so that, or the past three years, so that she doesn't have to marry this horrible man. So she just doesn't speak so that she doesn't have to marry him. Um, but she is deaf. She's learned to read people's lips to be able to communicate with them or understand what they're saying because she doesn't speak back. And then the king of their land puts her in an arranged marriage with a rival clan leader. It is their romance and it is so good. It is so good. I'm giving this five stars. I just loved how caring and sweet our hero was and how we saw Eveline grow and oh my gosh, it was book was beautiful. If you want a historical romance with disability representation, I'd really recommend this one. Also at the end of the book, the author states how um, our heroine's deafness it was inspired by her, the author's husband's deafness. Like he can hear low baritone noises. They don't understand what they're saying, but they can hear like muffled sounds. And that's how Evelyn is. And so that's why she really likes our hero when she sees him because he has this deep baritone voice that she can like like hear somewhat. She can't understand what he's saying, but she can hear the baritone roughness of his voice. And she like immediately becomes attracted to the man that her family warned her to be scared about. So this author really put her husband's own experience into Evelyn's experience in here. And it was, amazing i loved this so i listened to all of this basically in one sitting i never like eat and read at the same time that's just not me but you better bet i listened to this and read this while eating dinner last night at the dinner table i was obsessed i could not stop reading this and so i finished five cards while reading and listening to this and it was amazing if you have historicals that have disability representation in them please give them to me please give them to me um because my favorite historical romances have disability representation in them. The Madness of Lurdy and Mackenzie, this one. Like, I just need more. I need more because I feel like that's just something I love in romance books that I need more of. I need more of. So I still had a few more cards to do um, after I finished Number Seduce of Scott. So then I started Hello Stranger by Lisa Kleypas. Um, I am a, a little over 25% of the way through, I'm pretty sure. Um, I listened to more before bed last night. This is the fourth book in the Ravenels and our heroine in here is actually a doctor. Our hero is like, I don't really know what to call him. He's like a spy, kind of like a spy or like a detective. I don't really know how to describe him. I'm just really confused because I am pretty far the way into this and people have told me that this is their favorite in the series and I, it's not mine. All, it's not mine. I don't really care about them. There's like a mystery thing in here and I just don't care about that at all. Uh, I like the couple. The couple is really amazing, but it is nothing like Devil in Spring where I was like hooked, hooked the whole entire time. The whole book, I was obsessed with it. 
I am not really obsessed with this one, which is really sad to me. I like it, I'm enjoying it. I wanna know what happens, but like, I'm just not loving it as much as I did book two and book three. I feel like this feeling for this book is the way I was feeling for book one, and book one I gave three stars to. We'll see how I feel about this one. I'm sorry if this is your favorite in the series. I'm just not feeling it. I don't really like the mystery thingy ma bob in here, so yeah. I'm just not a mystery person. I don't like mysteries in books. So that's all my reading updates. I ended up getting a letter in the mail. So I believe this is from Spirit. So I'm going to be opening this. Let's open this. That card is so pretty, look at this. <gasps> look how pretty that is. That's so gorgeous, oh my gosh. Aw, that's so sweet. Thank you, Spirit, that's so nice. She sent me, she like wrote me a really nice letter in here. That's so sweet. Y'all, I absolutely adore letters. I keep them in a box. I have like a giant shoe box that I keep all of the letters that I, I literally have. No, it's, it's bigger than a shoe box, it's like this big. And I have kept every single letter that I've had in my life that, well, up until a certain point, I think I even have like my Valentine's that I got in elementary school. They're all in there and I love letters. They're the things that I will never, ever, ever in a million years throw away that I look back on. If I'm feeling myself and I'm feeling sad and I need to pick me up, I'll just go sit in the center of my room or my bed and just lay out all the letters on my bed and reread them. It is such an amazing time. I recommend it so much. Like collect letters and reread them and to give yourself a pick me up because it's amazing. So this just gave me a huge pick me up. So I'm gonna go text her and text her thank you because that's so sweet. And I still have to make her card. I am really behind on cards. Um, if uh, you get yours after Christmas, I am very sorry. Um, also my mail service here is very slow. So I believe Crystal like texted me like two days ago that she got hers and she was the first one that I sent out was Crystal's. And that one I sent like on December 2nd or third and it got to her on like the 10th. And I was like, dang, that took so long to get to her. And it was just a regular plain old letter. It's just taking me a while to make them also, yeah. So, um, but I've been really proud and amazed by what I can do. I didn't know that I could make these letters and I find them really awesome and fun to make. And they're really great to make while listening to books. So this is a very, very, very long update. I am sorry. So I am going to get to Cleaning also, I gotta clean my apartment because uh, I haven't cleaned since my friends have been here. <laughs> um, I gotta clean, um, I might film a video today, I gotta do some cards, I'm gonna listen to Hello Stranger. We got a bunch to do today. update for the night so for the lack of clips in here it's just been a very boring day not doing anything much so last update of the day yeah so i started decorating the christmas tree that clip you just saw the cats are loving it the cats always love decorating the christmas tree because we have ornament wrappings everywhere we have over 300 ornaments what i put on the tree today is less than one fourth of the ornaments that we have. I've been watching The Great British Bake Off with my mom, so we watched a few episodes of that. We started season three, I'm re-watching it. This is her first time watching it. I just got four cards done. Four cards done today. I gotta address them and put stamps on them and everything, and then those will be ready to go tomorrow. And then I did finish Hello Stranger by Lisa Kleipas. I forgot to finish my tabs for this one, but I will go back and finish that. I think I'm gonna give this either a 3.5 or a 4. I'm not really sure yet. This one just did not hook me. Like, like Devil in Winter was absolutely beautiful to me. And so was Marrying Winterborn. And like this one just didn't get the same kick, you know? And I'm even reading, um, I'm 30% of the way through 
The Devil's Daughter, I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. And I am adoring this one. Like, loving The Devil's Daughter. And like, I, I didn't feel this one, you know? I didn't feel this one. I think it was like the big mystery police thing or investigator thing going on in there wasn't my thing. I, I didn't find it interesting at all. Whereas this one, this historic romance is a romance between a widow and her dead husband's childhood bully. <laughs> so basically our heroine in here, Phoebe, she has two young sons, a baby and then a four-year-old. And um, she was married to a man who um, has always been sickly his entire life. And so he ended up passing away two years ago. But growing up, they were best friends. And he would write to her while he was at boarding school about this evil little boy who'd bully him all the time named Wes. Turns out Phoebe's brother marries Wes's cousin. So she has to go to their wedding and meet him and they may or may not catch feelings for one another through all of this and it is so good so far y'all. I am so excited to finish this. I am loving the single mom aspect in a historical because I don't think I've ever read it in a historical before. I'm loving that. And so I'm 30% of the way through that. I've been listening to that while doing cards and everything. That's the one book in this series that I don't have a physical copy of so I have to find a physical copy somehow. Also I forgot to tell you all this weekend I uh, went shopping with my friends so I got two new things that I thought I would show you that I thought was really cute. So I found this beautiful cute dress. I don't know if you can fully see it but it's really pretty and pink and I really like it. You can't really see it but it's really pretty and pink and I really like it. And then I also bought at that store that is really comfy and cute is this shirt. It has flowers on it. It's really cute. You can't really even see it all that well. I don't have the space right now to do a full body shot. Um, but this is super soft, super comfy. I love big shirts like this so I will definitely be wearing that very soon. I have to start making outfits for Disney. If you have any like recommendations of what to wear while at Disney World, please let me know because I've never been and I apparently need to make outfits to go. <laughs> I have to get to finishing these cards. I'm going to listen to The Devil's Daughter still and I am falling in love with this book. <laughs> just this one just didn't hit it for me, you know, so I think it might just be a three, which is really sad. You know, I've heard great things about this couple, but like, I, I didn't love this one as much as I should have or wanted to, unfortunately. I'm going to, again, dress, dress letters, clean up. I also have to edit this video, so let's go do that. Uh, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next video. Bye, y'all.